The heads don't lie, or so Shakira tells us. And gosh, that was one of my favorite songs. But the hips are such an important part of our life. And I want to talk today about hip openers and the benefits of hip openers from the physical benefits, the emotional and mental benefits, right through to the spiritual benefits, I would say. My name is, in case we haven't met before, Yoga Sensei Tawani Clark of Kututa Yoga. Do join the page if you are not already joined to the page or subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching this on the YouTube channel. So let me dive straight into it. Let's start with the physical benefits of opening those hips. Well, first and foremost, if you're like me, you spend an awful amount of time sitting, either on the sofa, at home, um, it could be in the car, it could be at work, but our hips are in a position where the front of our hips, we call them the hip flexors, are tight. So the first benefit we're going to get when we open the hips, when we do hip opening poses such as the lunge that we do most classes, we get release from these tight muscles in the front of our legs. Maybe I'll just stand up a little bit so we know that we get tight in this area here from a lot of sitting. And then there's a chain reaction, everything is connected because our hips are tight what can happen again as these hip muscles become tight is that they can the tightness tucks up the pelvis a little bit so the tightness here will tuck up the pelvis leading to tightness and losing of that lower doses curve at the back of the neck of the back and this is why we find that a lot of people with tight hips also have a lot of back problems. So one thing that we can do to help with our back problems is actually release the front of the hips. Another thing, and this one I have experienced as well, is knee problems. So what happens is as our, you know, everything's connected. So the hips are connected to the back and they're connected to the next joint further down, which is actually the knees. Now, what happens is when the hips are tight, they affect the knees. And that happened to me. I had knee problems about um, eight years ago. And when I went to see a physiotherapist, she said that my outer hips were really, really tight. I had outer hips and legs. And it's called the IT band. I don't know if anyone is familiar with this band going over here, the outside of the hips. And I had to do a lot of rolling on the outer part of my hips. So that's another thing that the hip stretching exercise can do, can help release, maybe it's the outer part of our hips that is tight as well. And that is misaligning or disturbing our knee and leading to problems. The fourth one is the inside of our hips can be tight. And you notice now that, you know, we sit, so we're tensing the, the front of our hips are tight, but also the inside of our hips in the inside of our legs, those muscles are also really tight, which means that we are not squatting. This is meaning it's difficult to us to squat, and it means that we, we, we can't get into a squat position. And they're also tight because we don't get into a squat, squat position, because before we invented chairs, it was very common to squat in your waiting or squat every day. I mean, hopefully you do your business at least once a day and you squat at least once a day. But that's no longer there. And that is disturbing our digestive system. We have a lot more constipation when we are not in that squat position. We are tighter in the hips, in the knees. We struggle to get to the floor and back. I remember my grandmother, even when she was 90 and 100, she could squat and get up onto the floor. But I see a lot of people in the next generation 
who grew up in chairs, who didn't grow up sitting on the Mbasa, as we say in Zambia, on the mat, are struggling with these issues of our hips, of our back, of our knees, and of our elimination process not going very well. I'm going to move on to the second category. You may have heard me speak about this before, or you may have heard of the fight or flight and freeze mechanism when we are stressed. Biologically, we have hormones that go through our body which say, you know what, it's not safe around here today. I am gonna get ready, I have to be on standby. I might have to fight, or I may have to flee, which is flight, or I'm just gonna freeze, just be on standby to decide which is gonna be my option. That might be great when we're facing a predator, when we're facing a lion, something that we need to outsmart or another foe, another being that is threatening us. But it's not so great when we're stressed because we're not sure whether we're gonna make a, a deadline, right? So all this tightness, this preparing to run again, stretch, keeps those hip flexors, remember I said, in the front of the hips, gets them tight and all emotionally wound up through that. So when you stretch those hip flexors as well, it can help ease some of the stress because the stress tends to lock into those muscles and to release the energy that came in with that stress. We need to, one of the ways is to release and stretch the muscles and then we feel lighter and then we feel relieved and we haven't got all this energy pent up in our hips as if we're about to sprint or attack somebody. Another interesting thing is the relationship, again another relationship between the body and the mind. Kutu Yoga is about, about bringing all these elements together. So when we are tight in our body, the yogis say we're not flexible in our movements and the hip is pretty much the most flexible um, joint in the body, we are not flexible in our mind, in our thinking. So the yogis say that opening up the body, making the body more flexible will help make our mind more flexible as well. We have more options of movement in our body. We have more options in our mind as well. The final one is, I will call it spiritually or on a soul level, on an energetic level. The hips are the sacral chakra, sacred. I love to think of it as sacred. This is where we all began our life in our mother's womb. This is where creation procreation takes place. It is a sacred place. It is also where we are creative in other ways. We are creative artistically with ideas, with music and expressing ourselves. So think of dance. Dance for me is all about the hips, especially if you, if you grow up in Africa and in the south of Africa, it's all about the Fuengula. It's all about how we move in the hips. It's about joy. It's about opening ourselves to flow with new ideas and just to enjoy life really. Let's not just be so serious all the time. It's also about letting go and having fun or going with the flow as we say in Kututu Yoga and not forcing the fun. So subscribe to the Kututu Yoga channel if you haven't and like the page and look forward to seeing you in class.